Hello again guys, I hope you're all keeping well. Today what we're going to cover is using our PGP key for SSH authentication. I've been doing this for the past few years and it's a, a great little hack. If you're like me, you're always reinstalling your main operating system, so consolidation like this is ideal. It means you only have to maintain one key, which is your PGP key, which you're probably already maintaining anyway. And thankfully this is very easy to do. I'm going to start from the basics, but if you've already got a PGP key, and I hope you do, you can just skip forward to adding an authentication subkey. I'm going to put a timestamp on the screen right now. Okay, so let's get started by creating a PGP key pair. To do this, we're going to use GNU PG. It's installed as a core package on most modern Linux distros. So let's run gpg dash dash expert dash dash full dash gen dash key. And we're going to choose option 9 for elliptical curve and option 1 for curve 25519. 0 for no expiration. And activate. Ask for our name and our email address. No comment and O. OK and quit. It's going to ask us for a password. Try and give it a very long and complicated password. You do want this to be secure. OK, and that's our key pair generated. OK, so now that we've generated our key pair, we need to add a subkey with the authentication capability. So let's edit our key by running gbg dash dash edit dash key dash dash expert and enter our email address we use when we create the key. OK, now we're going to type add key, add a subkey, and we're going to choose option 11 for an elliptical curve key, and we're going to set our own capabilities. We're going to press A to toggle on the authenticate capability, and then option and then S to toggle off the sign capability. Okay, now Q to save that, and choose curve 2551. And it doesn't expire. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Really create? Yes, we do. Give our password. And that's our authenticate uh, subkey created. Let's press Q to quit and yes to save. So now that we've added the authenticate subkey, we need to get the key grip. So to find that, we're going to run gpg dash dash list dash keys dash dash with dash key grip. And the key grip we want is the one under the authenticate subkey, which is designated with the A in brackets. So let's copy that. And we're going to echo that. Into this file dot slash dot new pg slash ssh control. Let's cut that out to make sure that worked. Looks good to me. So now we need to add a few lines to our RC file to change the SSH agent. I'll put the entry in the video description so you can just copy and paste it. If you're using bash, you want to add this to your .bashrc file in your home directory. If you're using zsh, you want to add this to your .zshrc file also in your home directory. I'm using bash, so I'm just going to nano .bashrc. I'm going to paste this entry in. Control O to write it, Control X to exit out. Next thing we need to do is we need to add a line to the SSH config file to tell GPG agent to use the current window when it asks for a PGP password request. So nano.ssh slash config. And again, I'll put what you need to copy and paste in the video description. Control O, Control X. Okay, so, so now we're done, so let's reload our RC file. So dot, dot bash RC, and I should reload the bash RC file. Okay, so all that's left now is to copy our key to whatever server we want to SSH into. I'm going to run SSH dash copy dash ID, and I'm going to copy them to my Raspberry Pi test server. As for our password, this is our server password, not our PGP password. Okay, so that's copied onto my Raspberry Pi test server now. 
if your server is already up and running, you can just uh, copy and paste the public key into .ssh slash authorized underscore keys. And to see the public key, we can run ssh dash add dash L. And we can just copy that into authorized underscore keys. Okay, so the only thing left to do now is to test it and see if it works. Okay, so let's try it out and see if it works. And there you go, we have the uh, credential screen prompting for our PGP password. And we're logged in. Okay, so at this point, it's probably a good idea to back up your private key and your revoke certificate to external storage. If you've uh, if you had a PGP key pair to start with, you should update your backup because we've now added a new sub key to it. Okay, guys, well, that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.